Hey everybody, welcome to Altium Academy. I am Zach Peterson, your local technical consultant for Altium. And today we're gonna to be talking about how to floor plan your design around a large IC. We got a great question from a viewer. Let's go check it out right now. Superlicious dude writes, hi, could you please elaborate on the high pin count BGA routing issues you briefly mentioned in your most recent video? Specifically, I'm interested in routing large pin count FPGAs, which present a particularly unique challenge, but also have unique opportunities to optimize. Okay, so what the question goes on to ask is about how to floor plan and route with a large integrated circuit based on the data in the data sheets. Now, data sheets actually don't really help you a lot. I mean, they help you figure out configuration, they help you figure out how to you know, actually put it on the board, but they don't always help you so much figure out floor planning. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Let's go ahead and get started. When we last looked at BGAs, we talked a little bit about floor planning and specifically how to set up different sets of pins in a fan out so that you can easily route traces into the BGA footprint and make those connections to the component. So if we look at a typical BGA, I'm just gonna draw it out here real quick. So here on this edge, we've basically got part of a low pin count BGA. So I won't draw out the whole thing because I really only need this side. So if we look at our BGA footprint, you might rightfully ask, well, how am I gonna route into this thing? So here I've got my component outline, here I've got my balls, and then right around this, I've got traces that are gonna come in, probably from up here as well. And then you're gonna have one that can come in here and basically come off here at a little angle and touch this inner pad. And then you basically do the same kind of thing internally, you're just doing it with vias. So the point that's brought up in the question is, how do we plan for routing? Like, where are we gonna route? Which interfaces do we care about? How exactly are we going to get these signals from here over to this end of the board? And there's a couple of other questions that brought up a similar point, specifically around like controlled impedance interfaces that might be on the bottom of this BGA. So first things first, when you're floor planning your design around this and figuring out where you're gonna route each of these different pins, just look at where the interfaces are. That's really the first step. And that might sound kind of obvious, but if you've never actually designed with one of these, uh, one of these components, there's a lot going on in one of these footprints. And so I think it can be kind of confusing and difficult to try and figure out where exactly you're gonna route everything. Typically what you'll see is you'll see these big blocks of pins that are all grouped together for specific interfaces. So these might be, just as an example, you know, low speed IOs, let's just say for, as an example. You might have a situation where these two are, give you a good example here, are ethernet. And so in this case, you would wanna route out with one of these traces here. You would have one of these traces coming out like this. They're gonna be routed as a differential pair. And then you might have to apply a short little length matching section here at the very beginning, just to make sure that the lengths are matched and that the signal timings are matched. This is just for ethernet on this pin, uh, or on this pin pair, I mean. And you know, you could have USB, you could have some other interface and you know, just kind of go down the list. But the point here is that these are kind of grouped together in different regions of the footprint. There's another question that actually asks about the impedance, and let's look at that now. Asmi06 writes, one point you might want to cover is that chip manufacturers often allow violating impedance specs in the fan out area because there is simply not enough space for full spec traces and spacing. So that is an excellent point. You are exactly right. Sometimes you can't fit the full width of the trace into this footprint and actually route through these two balls and then make this connection here that you might need to make for, in this example, ethernet. So that's a great point. And it's not necessarily that the chip manufacturer allows you to make that impedance violation. It's that you kind of have to in order to get to this point where you can actually route this in here and touch this interface. Now, typically what'll happen is if you need to route into like maybe a higher speed interface, it might wanna come down into an inner layer through a via. So that way you can just make a direct connection and you may be able to even avoid some of these other pins if you place the vias correctly. Now, 
Again, that's kind of a specialty case if you really want to do it through an internal layer. What's most common though is you'll kind of find these clustered around the edges and then some of the internal pins might be dedicated for like power and ground. What that question is referring to and especially with like routing a controlled impedance trace into a BGA, essentially what we might have here is that this ethernet trace might have to be, um, you know, I'll just kind of throw out a number here. It might have to be, you know, eight mil wide. Okay, so we're not on a super thin dielectric and this is what we need to hit the single ended impedance spec as part of this differential pair. This trace coming into the BGA might also be eight mil wide. But what happens right here? Well, right here, because we have some landing pads here and because we might actually have some uh, landing pads here that might actually come off to a via or they might come off to a pad here, you might have a pad coming off right here. You may actually need to reduce this width just a little bit and then come in and then make the connection. Okay, same thing on the inner layers. You're essentially just reducing the width so that you can get underneath the BGA and then make the connection that you need. And that's okay because typically these lengths, like this length all the way from here to here, is gonna be short enough that this is just an electrically short connection. So essentially what that means is that this IO or this pin on this interface doesn't notice that this impedance is very different from this impedance. And so if you calculate the input impedance right here looking into this section of the trace, it's gonna predominantly look like this section of the impedance, which you did design to the correct spec. So keep that in mind, it's okay to route into these pins with a slightly reduced width uh, on your trace and you'll still be able to maintain impedance control. That's our routing portion, but now where do we put everything? What other stuff do we need to put around this BGA? We might wanna put the ethernet stuff over here on this side of the board. So when I say ethernet stuff, this could be the magnetics, it could be the connector. You may have to go to an external Phi chip that's common with some ethernet transceivers. Whatever it may be, your ethernet block, or you could call it your circuit block, is gonna be over here on this side of the chip where you have your ethernet interface. Now, let's say with these IOs, you need to connect to say, uh, like an external ASIC. Well, if that ASIC is located down here, then you should have the IOs right here. And then it's gonna just route up to these IOs right here. And that's perfectly fine. So when you're floor planning out your BGA, especially if it has some high speed signals, I always like to try and place the high speed stuff first because the high speed stuff could take up a lot of the routing, especially if it's DDR. So DDR is one of those things where you basically have like a big parallel bus. And let's say we have a big, not necessarily big, but let's say that we have a DDR memory over here and I've got my DDR interface under my chip. The interesting thing about DDR is because you need all of this length matching across a bus of parallel signals, the space that's required for routing can actually be a lot of space. Like it could be like, you know, this whole region of the board that gets allotted for space. And that's just so that you can apply all the length matching sections and you can make sure that all of these pins are getting over here to this external DDR chip. The way I like to approach BGA is, again, look at where the interfaces are, specifically the interfaces that you need, and put the stuff around those interfaces on the same side as those interfaces. And that's what's gonna allow you to really easily route the DDR stuff to the DDR stuff, the ethernet stuff to the ethernet stuff, and you know, whatever else. Now, you wouldn't really wanna put like the ethernet stuff all the way over here next to the DDR stuff if you didn't really have to. Are there times where you might have to? I mean, probably, but you could probably get around that by some clever rotation of your BGA. So maybe you could rotate the BGA so it's a little easier to instead of break out of this side and go down and under, it's a little easier to actually go like up and around if you need to. That's one possible way to do it. So there is no specific way to fan out or to floor plan, I should say every single processor, but these are some good tips for doing it with a BGA. We also got another question related to this. Ryan Lang writes, good morning and thanks for the videos. I'd really like some expert help on how to track down and find design guidelines. Some are straightforward and easy to find and some seem hard to find. For example, I'm trying to find any kind of routing guidelines for a Cyclone 5 FPGA. I can find the data sheet we seems to cover device configuration, but where do I find routing and layout tips for such an important component? So now what I wanna look at is maybe an alternative packaging style that you might see 
for a BGA component. So just because a component comes on a BGA doesn't mean that's the only way that it's gonna be available to you. Sometimes what you have, like with the Cyclone FPGAs that were mentioned in the first question, is that this is actually in like a flat package, so a quad flat package. So a good example would be like a QFN or a kind of a related package. And essentially, in this type of design, you would have all of the pins that you need located around the edges. So here we wanna implement the same kind of strategy for floor planning and planning for routing. Now, when you get to really high pin counts, meaning like the pins along here are really very dense, you may have to do the same type of thing if you have wide traces coming in here. And actually one thing that you can do is you can come off every other pin and go into a via to hit the inner layer. So that's actually really common. So just as an example, maybe this is, you know, our, eight mil wide trace and it needs to go to this guy. So we may wanna taper it in in order to hit this landing pad because if this is too wide, it may get too close to this pad and then you have a manufacturability issue either because you've got too small of a solder mask sliver or because the clearances just get so close they can't reliably fabricate it. So that's one possibility. Then this can then come off and go into a via. And then kind of same thing up here. And then you can just kind of repeat this up all the way around the component. So that's one way that these types of packages sometimes get used with this type of routing. Now the routing that you're selecting here for this interface, the data sheet isn't actually gonna tell you like literally how to route it. Like they're not gonna tell you that you have to use an eight mil trace. And if they are telling you to use an eight mil trace, it's most likely for a specific example. So be very careful if you do find some layout examples in some of these data sheets for large processors or well really for any other IC. The problem is that they're talking about something very specific. It may not match your design. Your design might require totally different trace width, use totally different materials, have totally different layer count. And if they don't specify that in the data sheet, you would never know. Just like with the BGA, we wanted to kind of try and like group, you know, the DDR stuff or the ethernet stuff or the USB stuff together in the same region. We wanna do that here with this type of package too. And in some ways it's actually easier because you're not routing underneath and then coming up underneath the fan out in order to touch all of these pins that would be in the interior of the component. Instead, everything's right along the edge. So it's in some ways a lot easier. You might have your uh, SPI bus, let's say right here. You might have another USB controller over here. That'd be kind of odd to have one here and then one here, but you kind of get the point. You want to put the, uh, the stuff that needs the SPI bus on the same side as the SPI pins. You want to put the stuff with the DDR bus or the DDR uh, components on the same side as all the DDR pins. So this is really the, the simplest way to start floor planning this design. And it's simple enough, you can just do it on paper. Like if you have the pin out from a data sheet and you have it in front of you, you can just start drawing the boxes around it stating which you know components or which circuit blocks are gonna go uh, on different sides of your processor. So if you're ready to start looking for footprints or data sheets or any of the other information that you might need for a big component like this so that you can use it in your design, you can find all of that info on Octopart. You can also find all of that info in the manufacturer part search panel inside of Altium Designer. And then once you have all that data into your PCB layout, you can start arranging components and doing all your routing. Everybody go check out the links in the description. We've got a little bit of info on getting started with the PCB layout, specifically around like large BGAs and large integrated circuits like this. Go check out that blog. Thanks everybody. And uh, don't forget to call your fabricator.